My name is Zoe Clark. I'm Senior Self-Management Programme Officer at NAS. And today I'm joined by Colin Beaver, who is Matron and Senior Clinical Nurse Specialist at Portsmouth, Portsmouth Hospital. Hi, Colin. How are you? Good afternoon. Fine, thank you. Nice to be back again. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we really um, appreciate the time on these and you always have so much information and advice packed into these talks. So um, thanks for joining us again, especially when you're so busy. <laughs> Uh, so um, today Colin's, Colin's going to be talking all about mobility aids and devices you can use around the house and out and about uh, that can be helpful when you live with axial spa. Um, so Colin will have a few slides and do a short presentation and then we'll have time for Q&A at the end. So as you're watching, please do pop your comments and your questions in the comments box and we'll go through as many as we can at the end of the session. As always, the video will stay on our Facebook page so you can come back and watch it again later. And we'll also pop it onto the My AS My Life web page on our website. And I'll pop a link to that in the comments because we'll pop the, the slides up in the presentation afterwards as well. So you can look through those in your own time. Uh, so hi to everyone who's joining us. Please do comment and say hi. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, and so before we get started, Colin, for anyone who's not seen your previous sessions, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and, and where you work? Yeah, so I'm Colin Beaver. I'm um, a matron and clinical nurse, senior clinical nurse specialist here in Portsmouth. I also have a manager's role as well. Um, so I've been where, in rheumatology now nearly 28 years, so I've got a lot of experience. And sometimes some of the things I talk about are not necessarily often science-based, but they actually are things that we would consider to be common sense. But actually, when you're in a situation, common sense doesn't always prevail and it's just a good thing just to float some ideas that may help people live better with their long-term conditions such as AS. Brilliant thank you and we get so many questions about this topic on the helpline as well so people looking for advice on things they can use around the house or you know what mobility is that can be helpful and when to start using them um, and I, I use a walking stick myself as well so I'm going to be listening with interest to this as well see what, what other tips I can get. <laughs> So I just see, yeah, we've got a good few people joining us. So thank you everyone for, for joining us. Um, hi to Dara out on a dog walk. So hopefully you enjoy it. And yeah, do have any questions in the comments as we go through as well. Uh, so Colin, if you're ready, I'll hand over to you for the presentation and then come back for the Q&A at the end. Will do. Okay, thank you. So hopefully people can start to see my slides. Perfect. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to take you through um, home life made easier um, living with Axial Spa. And it is unique. Sometimes some of the things we'll be talking about may be unique to people living with Axial Spa. And sometimes it's um, not specific and can be advised for anyone living with any type of long term condition. And our homes sometimes can feel like an obstacle course. And although and not expecting anyone has a rope that they climb up in their land. Um, but we do find that actually, as we get, not necessarily just with living in the long-term condition, um, as we get older, sometimes our houses and our homes become a bit of an obstacle course. So if you've got knee pain and hip pain, just doing stairs can be quite a, a difficult task and painful. And while um, and there's not an answer to everything, and I'm not suggesting people keep moving houses to fit their um, lifestyle in fact or their problems they have around the house there are some quick wins that people can consider the first thing and this always resonates with me because i regularly recommend something to my parents um, who are getting older now but actually they've always done it this way and in fact no matter what you can advise them they will still go back to doing it the old way and there are a number of things that um, i can talk about um, having elderly parents that actually resonates with working with patients. And the fact it has to be right for you at that right time. There's no point in someone saying you have to do that if you really, you're not ready for it, you're not ready for a, an adaption or home device, um, or actually doesn't still fit in with your lifestyle. And I've had also patients talk about that actually they want their, home, their house or their home to be their person to them, not designed to be for a disabled person. And disability is defined by the individual and not by anything else really. But actually, if you start to put lots and lots of equipment in, people actually can feel uncomfortable because it becomes very visible. 
that there's some form of disability that's affecting the household. And of course, in this day and age, there's lots of problems around cost. Most of the um, equipment and things that we are available have become quite expensive, become quite a lucrative business for people designing equipment and resources for people living with some kind of long-term condition. So I would always say that if um, equipment advice is expensive, always think about, could you put it on a wish list um, for birthday presents, anniversary, Christmas presents? Because once again, family members often struggle to know what to buy for people um, for their birthday. And actually as an adaption or device may be helpful. You could be quite imaginative. And if you've got, if you're, but household that likes to use um, swear words, then you might want to start charging them to build up a pot of money. Um, and also you may want to actually think about turning something you enjoy, such as a hobby, into something that you can then sell on. So it may be um, card making, it may be um, knitting, it may be even things like growing plants for your garden. So you can turn your hobby into some kind of, uh, a, not business as such, but a way of income generation. And there are other things. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Are you able to put, um, pop it onto a slideshow from the current oh. slide, please? Oh, so oh, sorry there. Can you see it now better? Yeah, that's perfect. Just for people on mobiles. Thank you. Sorry. Um, yeah, so, um, and there are other things. If you are a smoker, we know the, the detrimental effects of smoking on um, Axial Spa um, and also long-term life um, conditions and comorbidity. So, stopping smoking and maybe actually a way of putting that money to a more beneficial use. There are some organisations out there where you can borrow equipment and devices. So once again, before you um, invest in, say, a, a, a large piece of a device, you may want to borrow it. Um, I always do look up on things like Gumtree, um, whereby there may be someone giving away um, a device that they no longer need. Be aware though, you do need to be cautious when you're doing that sort of thing. You need to make sure it is in full working order. And it's not going to be detrimental to you. So um, I can always remember my grandmother um, having her husband's walking stick. Well, she was a lot shorter than him. So the walking stick wasn't correct for her height and therefore potentially caused her more risk. So do once again, if you are using secondhand equipment, you get it fully checked out by someone who can make sure it's safe and sturdy. And actually it fits the purpose for yourself. There are some short-term loan options through St. John Ambulance and the British Red Cross, things like um, commodes, raised toilet seats, um, toilet frames, wheelchairs, which may once again give you a short-term relief if you're having a flare or you need something just for an interim period. Um, or even if you want to try something that they have on hire or short term loan that you then may find useful in the house rather than going and, out and laying out a large amount of money to then find the equipment isn't suitable for your needs. So contact the St John Ambulance and the British Red Cross services um, for their home equipment library equipment loans may be also useful. The other thing is, is always when do you buy it? I know we, Rick and um, Zoe and I were talking about when do you start to use something? You don't want to use it too early because it may not have its advantage at that time, but you do need to perhaps use it and trial it before you really do need it. Because if you're at the stage whereby you're finding you've become more disabled by a part of your disease, and then you're trying to use something, you may not get the best use of equipment. So not too early, not too late. And sometimes your physiotherapist may be able to advise you, especially around walking aids, but other equipment like um, home adaption equipment, things like that, you may want to be asking for an occupational um, therapy review just so they can point you in the, um, the line of the right direction of when and what equipment is appropriate for you at that time. There are some equipment that are funded through social care and through the NHS. And there are a number of web, web pages where you can find out that information. Um, so it's once again, you may find that there is equipment that is not fundable um, and you do have to buy it yourself. There may be equipment that is fundable by these organisations. You just need to know how to apply for them. Um, I would always say 
um, go to the charities and advice if you're struggling and to know what what um, how to apply for equipment. And um, also things like the Citizen Advice Bureau are very good at giving you practical advice if you're struggling with some of the complex forms that you might find on the internet uh, when you're applying for equipment. If you're working from home, then definitely do look at the home working um, tax relief for um, employees who are working at home, especially during COVID, because some of that tax relief funding may allow you to buy the proper equipment that you need rather than sitting or on the sofa when you're trying to do some home working on the computer. So do look at, um, if you are home working um, to, through post through COVID, that you're accessing the right tax relief. So the occupational therapists, a lot of the things that we'll talk about are there for your support. They're there to make sure that they're giving you practical advice around equipment that will make your life easier. Now, there are different levels of occupational um, therapists. There are hospital-based occupational therapists, and they're often divided into two teams. A team that will look after patients who are having problems with hand-in-hand -hand function, and then there'll be a group of um, occupational therapists that are helping to facilitate discharge home to um, for patients who've been in hospital. Once again, they're tending to look at localised equipment that they can put into your home that will allow a, a, a prompt discharge. And then there's also a social services community occupational therapy team that once again, you can apply through social services to get advice around additional equipment and resources that are needed in your home if you haven't been admitted through the hospital system. So do ask for an occupational health therapist assessment if you're at home and you're struggling with day-to-day -day activities of daily, daily living. Now they do often prioritise things, so if you struggle to get on and off a toilet, that trumps perhaps um, being able to get in and out of your front door. Uh, different um, organisations have different criteria and there is often uh, a long waiting list, but don't be put off, apply early and then once again you might, um, you might find that useful. Most of the information you can find about um, community occupational therapists will be on your local um, government web pages or your council web pages. Just search, search um, adult and social wellbeing or occupational therapists. So, um, as I said, these are the kind of levels you can get, um, and there is a different response rate to different things. Um, there's a big priority getting patients out of hospital, as you can probably expect, um, but there are um, other resources you can access. And as you'll see on this web page, it, it shows you the Hampshire, where you can find the Hampshire um, occupational therapy. But most, as a local council, um, have them, their own web pages that set up to give you that information. As I said, the web page access can be quite confusing. So you have to go through a number of points to actually get to the point where you're requesting adaptations or equipment hire. You can always talk to your nurse specialist that can support you through that process as well. Or as I said, citizens advice or some of the organized charity and organizations can support you if you're struggling to do that. Unfortunately, in Hampshire, you do have to go through this process. So you do need to find someone who can take you through the web pages, um, some other, um, social care, occupational therapists, you can do referrals through telephone contact numbers. Um, and then once again, there's different levels that you can access. You can either be asking for equipment from the home, um, an assessment from an occupational therapist, um, the equipment for mobility or adaptations to your home that may make it easier for you. So don't get up to, don't get caught too up into how are you doing? So lots of people will, when they make a referral or contact someone, on the day they, they have a conversation with the occupational therapist, they say, well, actually, the day is not a bad day. You always have to really give them a balanced view of what it's like to have a good day and a bad day, and what things will help you on the bad days um, that you still need to have. And I can always remember people being turned down for additional support and advice, because at the time when they rang for that advice, they said, well, actually, today I'm doing quite well. And then within 24, 48 hours, they're having a massive flare. Um, and then they're struck with not getting the right support. So give them a balanced view. 
um, often talk about the worst day. So if a bad day, you can't get up and down the stairs, that's important to get across. You might then have to say, well, actually, in the course of a week or a month, I might have seven, 10 bad days, which means I can't get to bed, therefore I'm sleeping in a chair, um, rather than just saying, oh, I'm on occasionally bad days. So be honest. Um, sometimes um, the patient or the person themselves isn't the best person to be honest. And um, you often have to ask family members, how am I doing? Do you think I'm having more good days or more bad days? Because family are a lot more honest probably than the individual. There are a number of other organisations out there that can support people, Living Made Easy, um, DLF for Professionals is whereby you can access some resources, um, often designed for professionals, but actually there's no reason why patients can't act or people living with long-term conditions can't access those resources. Remember, there's been a massive home technology explosion and some of the home technology is better probably than some of the um, access, um, disabled access equipment. So do look at um, some of the technology explosions that's out there that may actually once again make you find living at home much easier. And we'll talk about some of those as we go along. So if we start at your front door, um, those of you who've got the persistent backache associated to your axial scar, as the mail comes through the post, Picking up that mail off the floor can aggravate your back pain. You may find you may also find range of movement in your shoulder and your hips restricts you from bending down to pick that mail up the floor, off the floor. You may use, choose to use a long um, arm grip or actually a simple device of things like having letterboxes put on outside your door or a letterbox um, mail catch device inside the house to allow your mail not to drop onto the floor. So quite simple um, things to consider, not too expensive. Um, the external mailboxes sometimes are about 20, 30 pounds. The internal ones are about 10 to 15 pounds. So um, they're quick wins that actually will aid you from the early days. Um, also, we're seeing more and more parcel deliveries. We're a lot more reliant on parcel deliveries. And we're seeing that um, some of the home parcel companies will leave things um, behind dustbins and things like that, which makes it really difficult for you if you then got to manoeuvre past the dustbin to pick something and lean over and pick something up. Um, you could consider putting a parcel shelf. Of course, that's very visible to other members of the public who may want to take your parcel. But there are, once again, these devices that you can buy if you're having regular home deliveries which once again protect the parcel, but doesn't mean it is on the floor level to pick up. Do remember, just because, um, not just because you've got axial scar, do you need to look after your back? You need to look after your back and managing weights and things like that. So if you're living, lifting heavy parcels or packages from the floor, it can aggravate and put your back pain at risk being increased. Then if we go to just inside the door, um, I'm notorious at throwing my shoes on the floor and they go under the sink in the bathroom and in the downstairs toilet. But of course, once you've thrown them off, you've got to pick them back up. So having things like shoe um, step things to put the shoe racks on, you have tall racks, may use a, a long armed um, grab to lift the shoes up to put them on a height that you can access them easily, may be helpful. And of course, when you're trying to put a shoe on, um, it's difficult. So you can get device. Um, the right way is really to bring your foot to a higher level rather than trying to bend forward, which, forward, which some of you may struggle because of your, ship, your shoulders, your hip flexibility and all your spine. And then also, if you're having problems putting socks on, there are these, or socks and tights, there are these devices that are quite easy available and lots of occupational therapists can support you in that for getting you a, um, a device that will help you to put your socks on. Um, you may not use them all the time, you might just need to use them if you're having a particularly bad day. But once again, they're a useful device um, to have at home. And then once again, they're very um, cost effective to buy from places off like um, Amazon and some of the internet shops. I must say, a perching stool is often really advanced, has lots of advantages. 
Um, you can use them in the kitchen if you're having to sit um, doing things in the kitchen sink, or you can also put them in the bathroom if you're having to, when you are struggling, maybe um, when you're um, washing your hand face using um, toy toothbrushes and brushing your teeth. So do consider a perch and stool. They're good. They raise their different heights, so you can raise them to a level that allows you perhaps not to have to drop to a low chair height or stand and aggravate your back. This is the helping hand long um, grip. Um, once again, these are often available from occupational hand therapists, I'm uh, sorry, occupational therapists, which allows you to have like an extension of your arm so you don't have to bend down to pick something up off the floor. Um, they're quite useful. Um, they do get a bit to take a little bit of getting used to, but there's something that are uh, once again reasonably priced. If you don't want to go to an occupational therapist, you can buy them from internet online stores. Home adaptations, um, just to talk about this really. Um, once again, you do at some point may feel that you need some home adaptations. There is a lot of information on the government webpage about this, about if you need um, adaptation building work and also from the scope. Always remember before you commit to any um, home adaptations, if you're applying for a grant, not to go ahead and agree a contract with a builder until you've got that grant authorised because you may not get full grants um, depending on different councils will have different priorities. But do look up um, and see if you're eligible, especially for things like if you're struggling to get in and out of the bath, either having maybe a wet room designed, um, which whereby you don't have even a shower tray to lift your foot into, um, or even sometimes even having a shower. So look at those um, before you actually commit to any contract with a builder. Stairs um, are a big challenge, especially if you've got, um, in addition to your axial spar, other range of movement problems associated with your hips, your knees. You may struggle to go up and down the stairs. Stair lifts are often available um, through grants. Um, they are often sometimes um, a long wait. So once again, don't wait long term before you start thinking about it. But what's quite good, and I would say um, it seems quite imaginative and inventive now, are these things like internal lifts that you can have built. So they're often sometimes better, especially if you've got poor posture because you're at spa and you struggle to sit on a, on a um, chair lift. Some of the newer um, internal lifts may be an option. Um, but what depending on the different councils and the grants that are available, once again, depends on what you may be able to apply for um, to use. When there are some companies that will um, sell um, reconditioned stair lifts. Um, I always had a situation when I lived in another house, I had a lady next door who was quite disabled with osteoarthritis. And unfortunately, she was going up the stair on her stair lift when there was a power cut and her stair lift, stair lift was very old fashioned. And she got stuck up in the middle of the staircase halfway through the evening. We had to wait for the fire brigade to come and help and get her downstairs um, rather than put her back to upstairs where she was going to be stuck. So once again, be aware the modern ones are better because they often have a bit of a battery life on them. But some of the older ones, if you're buying a reconditioned one, may not have that facility. Lighting. So um, putting on a lot on, on and off lights, if especially um, the light switch is not accessible, may be difficult. Um, today we're seeing a lot more of these. Um, sensor motions, um, touch or oh, um, sensor lights that are really good, especially if you're in the stairs. Um, you can't get the stair light or the easy on the stair lights, you can get those. And there are also more and more that are actually um, you can use using an app. So you can use them through your Google Home or your Alexa. Rather than having to get up and turn the light switches on and off, you can just say Alexa light on, Alexa light off. I apologise if any of you have got Alexa and I've just said that because your lights have probably just flashed on and off. Um, so be aware also if you suddenly are using these at home and someone talks about Alexa on the television, they can affect your um, lights going on and off. But it's, I use them, I've got them in about four rooms now, only because I quite like technology. It's quite nice to sit there in the evening and not have to get up to go and turn the lights on and off. 
just telling Alexa to do that for you. Electric sockets. This has always amazed me. The electric sockets are always at skirting board level, which really, really does aggravate back pain. Um, once again, they're often behind furniture, so they're not the easiest thing to reach if you need to unplug something. So there are adaptation there. Once again, our electric, um, sorry, um, device activated plugs where you can turn the lights on um, just by the push of a button and the, the lights are fitted into specialist plugs. If you're struggling with hand function to actually pull the plug away from the actual wall, then once again, you've got some of these things that can be fitted around the plug that allows you to get a better grip. Or if you really do struggle getting down to, um, put, the, to put the plug in or, out, in or out, then you can now get these extensions which fit to the wall. You can have someone attach them to a wall so the plug sockets are a, a standing height. Easy wins, not expensive, but often are quite good for people who are struggling with range of movement in their back, hip and shoulder. Heating, um, we're seeing more and more of this. I, I expect at the moment with the electric bills and everything going up, people are really cautious about putting the electric on. But there are, once again, a number of devices, especially if you've been out and you're cold and then you're painful when you come home, having these devices set your heating so it's on just before you come home, so the house is warm and ready for you to um, come home to may be useful as well. Um, I've not used any of these yet, but I'm hearing there are some good um, devices out there. And also some of them offer you some um, electric saving options as well. So do think about them. Um, these are not necessarily normally available on grants, but once again, maybe something you want to consider discussing with families um, if you need them. Although this is not around living well at home, um, do remember that if you've got an old house, and you're having problems with um, heat loss, you may want to once again apply for some energy saving grants. And this will allow you to have more heat, heat efficiency, but also save you money in the long term. Um, so do once, don't forget if you're in an older house that hasn't had any um, upgrades around um, insulation, there are still grants out there that you may be eligible to apply for. And local authorities normally have these on their web pages, but also citizen advice are very good at giving you advice if you're in either a, a, your own home or you're in a, a rental of property or even in um, social housing or council housing um, blind, um, houses so you might be able to be eligible for special grants or they can advise you about how you can approach your landlord or your council to get those upgrades. Cleaning, um, bane of anyone's life, really, and um, especially um, we often have to reach. Um, but once again, there are so many devices now on the market. You've got things like these extendable or a telescopic dusters that you don't have to reach to a high up. Um, I would always say never come into my house and do a white finger glove along tops of cupboard because I forget to do those on a regular basis where my mother would regularly every week the dust at the top of her shelf. I'm not saying I'm dirty, but I just forget to do that. But also though, these devices allow you to do it perhaps easily. Hoovers are amazing in causing back pain and shoulder pain. A, the ones that are the, with the, the extension um, hose um, often require you to get in a bad posture when you're trying to do the hoovering. Um, and some even the upright ones are heavy to lift around the house. And that was one of the things that um, I did help my parents with. We decided that they would have two hoovers, one downstairs and one's upstairs. So dad, the dad doesn't have to lift the hoover upstairs. He's got two devices that helps him um, with his back pain. And then if you really are technology, moving on to some of these robot um, hoovers are quite good. Um, my bed is really, really heavy to lift and really causes me back pain. So I just use this little robot hoover that uh, wasn't too expensive that I used to get the dust and dog hairs from under the bed, uh, which saves me having to lift the bed up. Ironing is another home or activity that really aggravates your back. And that's often because we stand in the same posture for some time. 
we don't move too much, we have a um, repetitive movement in the shoulders, we can add, which can aggravate shoulder pain. If you are a sort of person that still irons your towels or pillowcases or handkerchiefs or socks, maybe consider giving those up. Um, they're not necessarily uh, advantage to anyone other than perhaps you're, you're comfortable with them. But also think about breaking your ironing down instead of doing two or three hours long iron, if you've got a big family, breaking that ironing down into small manageable loads over the week, maybe asking family members to participate by doing their own ironing. Looking at your ironing board, making sure you've got a really truly good ergonomic ironing board at the right height that doesn't aggravate your back pain. There are some now devices, ironing boards that are seated that you can purchase. And I can't wait for the picture on the right the bottom, these are a new automatic ironing device where you just hang your shirts on, you push a button, the shirt disappears and comes out the other side fully ironed. I, uh, I'm desperate for this device to come onto the market. Backup plans and managing um, cooking is often something to consider about. If you're having a particularly good day or period of time, you may want to be able to engage in doing your own cooking. If it's a moderate day or struggling, you may want to consider calling upon family members or using them as a family event to cook, or you may even choose to invest in things like um, ready meals. Um, and depending if you're having a particularly bad day, you want quick wins, um, maybe using um, home deliveries or quick wins that don't actually cause you a lot of, of problems around um, lifting heavy saucepans, maneuvering in difficult irons, uh, irons and difficult cookers and things like that. So do you have a backup plan for those days that are good through to those days that are really bad? Because the last thing you want to do is not be eating healthy and nutritious if you're having a bad day. And although maybe um, takeaways aren't the best thing, some of the ready meals that you can buy from some of the supermarkets are quite nutritious and are good, perhaps quick fixes on a bad day. In the kitchen, um, once again, there are lots of devices. I think the kettle on the left-hand side, once again, perhaps portrays that we're in a, uh, in a disabled person's home and someone may not like that. The second one looks a bit more techy, and maybe not so disabled, but they are kettles that allow you to tip water into a cup safely without actually having to lift the kettle. If you struggle with big kettles, maybe even move them to a small, travel kettle will help because you don't have to lift heavy weights of water um, or even even if you're normally using a normal kettle perhaps not filling it only filling it for what you actually need there are other devices such as those um, cup devices where you can just put the um, heater inside a cup or a mug that will boil the water and then more more modern devices whereby there are kind of a kettle that has a push button function that just delivers one or two cups of water um, as you need it. So technology is moving, but some of them are specifically designed for people with disability and functional problems, and there are some that are actually just more modern technology. Remember when you are in the kitchen, poor posture, um, our sink units are designed, and our work-based units are designed for the average population. And if you're a tall person, then you're definitely gonna struggle. If you're leaning over a low um, height, I definitely wouldn't consider or asking any of you to do the second picture, picture where you're kind of doing the splits, unsafe um, for um, posture, but also for balance. But there are things that we will do to try and minimal, to minimize the effects of what our kitchen heights are maybe at. Now, once again, you can use a perching stool that allows you to be in a good posture. Um, and also you can sometimes, if you're struggling um, with cutting items up, you can have these simple devices that raise a chopping board to a reasonable level, which gives you good posture without having to aggravate your back or your shoulder. Maybe rethink your kitchen, especially if, um, once again, you've not looked at it for some time and you've found you're struggling, maybe right, lifting your arm up to get something out of um, a top shelf or bending down. Um, the kind of guidance really is that things that are you sometimes use that are light, you should perhaps put at a higher level. Things that you rarely use and that are slightly higher, 
you may want heavier, you want to put it a lower level, the body at uh, the same height. But the things that you're using on a day to day basis, you want to use at the level that's at the most common um, thing. So things like um, where you store cups, sauces, plates, um, and maybe in your storage cover, have tins and things like that, that you're using on a regular basis. You want to use them at the most appropriate level for you. So you don't have to keep reaching up and bending down. The position of cupboards, um, once again, is very unique to everyone's house. Um, you can often find that you have to get down, and even if you do get on your hands and knees, there's something you want within the back of the cupboard that is hard to reach. So technology and advancements in kitchen design has really been helpful. You can now find these um, devices that are easily installed in most kitchens um, at a low cost, or if you have a new kitchen designed, maybe you want to consider those being added in as a feature. And then the worst, not worst case scenario, a scenario may be that if you do need to get down something like that little trolley um, sitting aid on the right hand side may be useful to allow you to get to a, a, a lower level, but not actually having to get down onto the floor that allows you to see in or reach into cupboards easy. Managing and stacking items at home, um, I'm notoriously bad. I have a massive stack of plates, um, different sizes all on top of each other. But of course, when you want the, the larger plate, you have to lift the higher or the smaller plates off it. So having some of these plate racks in your cupboards may, once again, prevent you having to manoeuvre difficultly um, around trying to lift plates while you're trying to get one plate off uh, or a group of plates under another size plate. Moving hot, hot, heavy items and hot items around the house, especially if you have got mobility issues. Um, once again, some of the pictures you'll see on the left hand side, once again, identify that there's a disability or person with a disability in the home, but are safe. So they're very good for if you're struggling to carry a hot dinner from the kitchen, um, from the kitchen to the dining room or to where you're needing to eat your dinner, they're quite good um, to use. But there are some, once again, some modern things you can get from places like Ikea that don't necessarily look like um, someone's living there with a disability. So down to you, um, occupational, hand, uh, sorry, occupational therapists can often help with the devices on the left-hand side, but on the right-hand side, there's something you might find from the internet or say from a home, um, someone like Ikea. Home adaptations around the bathroom. This is when sometimes you will need to ask for an adaptation grant. Um, you can see this is what we call a wet room. So there is no step to get into and you've got reach bars or grab bars and you've also got seated area if need be. Um, some wet rooms, you don't necessarily need to have the seated area. You can use a perching stool that's waterproof um, in those as well. So, um, worthwhile considering with hearing lots and lots of more people getting these wet rooms that are useful. They also don't necessarily turn the house into a, a, an area whereby if you want to sell it on, that once again, someone doesn't find them useful. Other things, if you're having a bath, you can get these bath raises. Some of them, once again, are available um, through your occupational um, therapist, and some are available for um, from online companies. In the left hand side, when you've got this raise that you allow low, lowers you and raises you into the bath, and you can see how that does, um, does that with the picture slightly below it. There are also things like um, bath boards, grab rails, um, other um, devices which allows you to get in and out of the bath easily. Um, but if you are struggling getting in and out of the bath, then definitely do ask for an occupational um, therapy assessment. Raised toilet seats, um, maybe not everyone's cup of tea, but if you do struggle to get down to a low raised toilet, then maybe having a toilet seat um, is useful. Um, if you don't like the toilet seat, then something like the frames, or even on the right-hand side, that toilet seat doesn't necessarily look as perhaps someone who's got a disability versus someone who is normal life. So I think it's quite an aesthetic pleasing toilet seat that doesn't necessarily send out those messages that you may not want to have people visiting you. So 
Um, those can also, once again, be arranged through um, occupational therapists and some of the St John Amarins and British Red Cross services have them as home loan equipment if you want to trial it out to see how you're getting on. Um, struggling in the bathroom, this is what I was saying about when you're trying to clean your teeth. And I always laugh that I was put into a hotel a number of years ago, which was actually a disabled access person's uh, bathroom. And I got chronic back pain the week I was in that, um, using that bathroom because the mirrors and everything were at a very low level. But of course, in our own homes, they're, they're still not in, often in the best level if you've got back pain. So it's not a good posture, maybe to um, on the left-hand side. You can do things like opening the door if you've got a cupboard door and put one foot on the um, bottom shelf um, that helps to steady you and perhaps give you help with the back pain and hip pain. Or alternatively, you could use a perch and stool in a bathroom that would be helpful. Home work, and we briefly mentioned this. Um, there are lots of things on the market these days. Home raise um, lower desks, um, whereby you can push an automatic button that actually raises the whole desk. Or in the picture here, you can see whereby the gentleman's got a device that fits onto a normal desk and allows the laptop and the um, keyboards to be raised. The function or the good thing about this is that actually, if you can sit, you can sit down. But if your back pain or shoulder pain starts causing you too much discomfort, then you can stand for a little while um, using the raised desk raise. I would, once again, if you're working from home using a computer a lot of time, try and move away from using the dining rooms. They aren't they're dining room tables. They're not designed for home working long periods of time. The chairs aren't, once again, designed and you can find that aggravates your back, hip and shoulder pain. And when we're off to bed, um, I had a futon at one point, absolutely killed me getting an on and off the floor to get down to a futon level. Um, if you're struggling getting out of bed because it's low, you can get these devices, bed blocks, which is the right hand side, which just raises the bed slightly through to these devices in the middle, whereby they fit to the bottom of the bed and they, you can rise them to different um, heights, which suits your needs. If you are struggling to get in and out of bed, this is once again when something like an occupational hand, uh, keep saying hand over, sorry, an occupational therapist may be able to give you advice and support. If you're struggling to raise in the bed, um, there are these devices that fit under the mattress that actually turn your mattress into like a, a reclining and um, raising position. They are inflatable with like a little hoover machine that sits beside the bed. Often don't work very well on double beds. If you've got a double bed, you need to have a double or two devices. If you've got a single mattress or two single mattresses or fit on a double bed, they're quite easy um, to fit under the mattress that allows you to get into a better position to get in and out of bed. And then on the far, on the right hand side, you can see this lady has got a um, ray or a, a hand device that allows you to help bring you round to a sitting position and then you can use it to stand up. Simple devices, um, once again, occupational therapists can help with those sometimes. Managing at home, as I said, there's loads of equipment stores available. Search around, sometimes there's deals, um, so they may have a sale on. Um, they may have also what we call out of um, products, the products that they're gonna no longer discontinue. And you'll see on the, on the, the web page, there's a reduce section. So you can often find good um, discounts that are coming up um, either currently or they're talking about discounting. Um, wasn't, I wasn't aware there, um, the co-op or Argos also have a um, mobility and um, accessible equipment section that once again, you may find useful accessing. Once again, they tend to be um, reasonably priced um, so you can um, look at them. The unfortunate thing with these is often they don't have, um, once you've used them, you can't return them unless they're faulty. Where something through the um, independent living charities and things like that, they have equipment that you can often trial uh, either in their stores um, to see how you get on with them rather than having to purchase. If you have real bespoke needs, there's an organisation called REMAP these are a group of ex-engineers who have retired or 
um, moved on, that actually can look at some problem side solving um, devices. They can either, if they've got technology, they'll help buy, buy technology or build technology devices. But sometimes they can help with special ramps that maybe um, other organizations can't support you or social services can't support you with. So they will often um, look at your independent needs and rather um, buying a, a, no, a, a ready designed device that may need further adaptions, they can sometimes build stuff specifically for you. So um, you can contact them through the organization and talk about what you need and they can come up with ideas to see if they can help you. So they won't provide you with um, over the um, counter off the shelf devices or adaptations, they are more bespoke. And I said they use their um, engineering skills to um, come up with some great, fantastic ideas. Other resources, um, there are a number of charities and organizations that provide information out there, um, a device to people. So search the internet if you've got access to them, or if you haven't um, got access to them, talk to maybe um, the charities um, or um, citizen advice that can often signpost you into the right direction. So hopefully you found that useful. Um, quite a lot of information to hand over or share with you. Um, once again, Zoe um, has always got my contact number. So if you've got something you want to um, ask me or further, if you've got a specific problem, you can contact me um, through Zoe. And if I can't find the answer, I can go to one of my um, knowledgeable occupational therapists or, um, or physiotherapists for further advice and support for you. So hopefully you found that useful. It's such a big target. We didn't even talk about gardening in the garage, but there's lots of things out there that once again, you can think about decorating the house. Um, so hopefully you found that useful. Um, any questions I'm happy to take. That's been fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you, Colin. And yeah, absolutely packed full of information and really useful tips. Um, and I mean, I, for one, am really excited about the future of ironing and just having a, a self ironing machine because I just buy clothes that don't really need ironing and just <laughs> never do it. <laughs> um, so I'll keep an eye out for the, comments, for the, the questions and comments coming in. Um, we've got one from Monica actually um, asking for for help with getting an electric wheelchair. Um, so I, swear, I don't know, Monica, it'd be good if you could just clarify that in terms of financial help or more practical tips, just let us know. <laughs> so most of the um, electronic wheelchairs are accessible if you can't fund them yourself through um, mobility companies. Um, you do have to have a referral to a local disability um, consultant who once again can help support you um, there's both. There's a bit about having a bespoke wheelchair that fits your need, especially if you've got changes, um, functional, structural changes to your spine that a normal wheelchair doesn't support you with. Um, but if it's something like an off-the-shelf one, then you either have to look and see whether an occupational therapist can support you with a grant, or you have to self-fund those. But they've come down in price once again quite reasonable. Um, I think the hard thing about some of the wheelchairs or the scooters and things like that, they're fantastic, but you've still got to lift them in and out of your car. Um, if you have, a, a, once again, a bespoke wheelchair or something like that, um, some of the mobility car companies can also build in special lifts that allows you to get the wheelchair built into, or lifted into your car easily. Oh, that's really helpful, thank you. And I imagine, would um, so would it be the GP who makes the referral to the um, yeah, or your rheumatologist can sometimes, depending on, or your nurse specialist, I can refer to the local disability um, team to ask for a wheelchair assessment. Bear in mind there are long waiting lists for those, those services as well. And unfortunately, and not unfortunately, unfortunately, often um, children with disability get the, they are prioritised above anyone else. So, um, yeah, you, you, even if you apply today, you might find you're still waiting six, nine months down the line. Gosh, yeah, I imagine they're very in demand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope that was helpful, Monica. And um, yeah, do get in contact with us if you're if you need any more information on that. 
Um, at the moment, we don't have any more questions. We've got lots of thank yous coming in, though. Um, it's definitely been really helpful for everyone. And um, for anyone who's joined partway through, we will share all the slides on the website um, and you can come back and watch the recording anytime as well. So if you missed the beginning, then you can, you can come back and catch up. Um, but yeah, I mean, we did get that question. Um, we were chatting about it before we went live um, from Leanne on Instagram asking about sort of how do you know when to start using mobility aids? And um, I think it was really helpful as you described, it's kind of, it's getting that Goldilocks time in the middle, not too early, not too late. Um, certainly from my experience, um, I use a walking stick now and I'm out and about quite a lot because um, I found that my hip pain was stopping me from walking as much, which then meant I was doing less and, and that's not good for axial spar. So then using the stick meant I could actually do more with less pain and less fatigue and build that strength up. So yeah, it's just finding that, that right moment for you really. Yeah, and you always need, maybe need it in the event of a flare. So even though once you start using it, you get better or you find your mobility and range of movement has improved, you've mm -hmm. got something in the background for a flare. And these are the conversations that you need to have with maybe your physiotherapist or those of you who go to the NAS um, hydrotherapy groups, if they've got a physiotherapist there, because they're going to they're gonna give you the right advice for you that it's really hard to do a bespoke gene generic advice because it's unique to the device or the walking aid um, and also where you are with your condition. Absolutely, yeah, and especially as the condition fluctuates so much, doesn't it? So day to day, even hour by hour, you yeah. could feel really stiff and sore in the morning and then sort of a few hours later, it, things ease up and you're not de needing things so much. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, I'll give everyone a chance just for any um, any final questions for Colin. Um, do pick his brains while we have him here. <laughs> he knows so much. Um, so just while we're waiting for any final questions, um, I'll let you know about our next Facebook Live session. It's going to be next Wednesday, so that's the 11th of May at 1pm. And I'll be talking all about exercising during a flare-up. Um, again, it's an area that we get a lot of um, questions about in terms of how much exercise should you do when flaring. How do you exercise if, if you're in a lot of pain? So um, yeah, I'll be giving my top tips on that and also answering your questions as well. Um, just seen, um, oh, Monica's shared that um, she gets a lot of pain and wants to use crutches, but feel people's comments are hurtful. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, that's definitely something that you know, we do experience sometimes. Um, yeah, Colin, do you have any advice on that at all? No, I think, it is, it, it is so hard. People can be quite um, hurtful. Um, and even, I think sometimes family and friends are not appreciative and therefore they may make comments that are not really helpful. Um, but be proud. Um, you live, if you are living and you're needing your walking sticks, at least you're, or a walking aid, you're, at least you're doing something to make your life better. And at the end of the day, that's the key thing. And Sticks and stones will break your bones, but names will never harm you. I was, so it is hard, and I do really uh, feel for people who are in those situations. If you are finding that psychologically affecting you, um, maybe going struggling or wanting to go out and about, then do look for some kind of support and counselling and advice, because sometimes our perceptions are worse than they really are. Um, and so, um, yeah, definitely talk to someone if you're struggling to come to terms with that. And it's always really funny because we've, we, um, we get a lot of conflict in the hospital where people will be accessing like the disabled um, access toilets and then they're criticised, well, you're not disabled. Well, as I said before, dis disability is defined by the individual, not by anything else. And actually, um, we're all entitled to have disabilities that are visible and disabilities that are hidden. But if you're struggling with it, then do talk to someone to try and get some and they'll give you tips about how to manage situations that probably are far out my outside of my remit and advice. Absolutely. And um, I'll share when, when I pop the, this recording on the website as well, I'll share an article that I wrote recently about um, when the invisible becomes visible. Um, talking about kind of yeah going from having an invisible disability to then if you're using an aid or something like that it becomes visible. Because it yeah, I think it does take time to get used to and I mean, you even get well-meaning comments from people going, oh no, what's happened? Thinking you've got, you know, a short-term injury and even those can be difficult to navigate at first. So, um, yeah. Be proud, be proud that you know about AS and they don't know about it. So we've always said that um, 
AS acts with fire isn't known by the population. People may just think, oh, yeah. And what really frustrates me when people say, yeah, I've got a bit of arthritis. Yeah, they, they haven't got the arthritis that that individual's living with. But be proud, educate them, let them know that what acts fire means to you and others living with that disease. It's a good publicity for the, the to make the awareness around the disease itself. Absolutely. And there's a fantastic hashtag on social media, Babe with a Mobility Aid. So um, if you go have a look at that, it's um yeah, it's more light-hearted kind of side of you know showing your mobility aids and um sort of what they allow you to do as well, give you more freedom to do. Wonderful. So um I hope that was helpful, Monica. And um yeah, if um if you want to chat, do you just um can I help find the forward, drop me an email as well. Um and we've got a comment from Sam asking about bar bath aids. Um, I think we may have joined a little bit late in terms of um, Colin went through the um, different options for bath seats that could help you get in and out of the bath and, and grab rails and things. So um, when we do finish the live, do feel free to rewind and, and have a catch up on those. Yes, then I was just about the bath boards. I have seen people um, seen them on the internet and then suddenly got their son or your um, father to bake one out of a bit of wood. But they do, at least the shop ones are specifically designed for bars and they, they reduce the risk because the last thing you want to do is have something that's designed for you or well, someone's well meaningly made something for you that then causes your injury. So once again, be careful about what you get people to build for you um, if it's going to um, affect your mobility because it can cause you problems. And I've also seen someone um, whereby the son was fantastic. He, he decided to put... Um, a plank of wood between the front doorstep and the pay or the to the drive and in fact um, the patient or the person tripped up on the lip and ended up fracturing their hip so <sighs> well-meaning sometimes you just have to make sure it's safe for you absolutely yeah that's really good advice definitely safety first Wonderful. So we, we've covered all the questions. Um, was there anything else you wanted to, to share with us? Any final thoughts or anything, Colin, before we wrap up? No, I'm, as I said, I'm happy to, for them to, anyone to liaise with you. I can send you information or, or my slides are available for you as well as with some of the links on them. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, always appreciate your expertise. And yeah, no there's no exception. Absolutely packed full of really practical tips. Thank you. Um, so thanks again, everyone, for joining us um, live and for asking your questions. I'll keep an eye on the on the comments section over the next few days as well. So, Paul, and I'll let you know if we get any more questions coming through. Um, and I have put a link in the video in the comments to a survey, um, a very quick survey, it takes about three minutes, um, just asking for your opinion of the Facebook live sessions. And we'd love to hear what sessions you'd like us to run, help us shape the programme so that we're um, doing topics and, and content that is going to be most helpful for you. Uh, so thanks again, everyone, for joining. And thank you, Colin, again. And um, yeah, we'll be seeing you, I think it's next month, for a further session as well. So <laughs> we've snagged that one. Wonderful. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Okay. And see you next week. <laughs>